This will be the most controversial video thus far. <laughs> I had someone ask me today about um, the the painting of the Last Supper and how accurate it was, and and you know, is that Mary to his right side, and all, all interesting things, and and. I wanted to kind of jump on and talk about that because Jeshua ben Joseph was Aramaic. You know, he was from that area of the world. He was from the Mediterranean. And all the all the European Renaissance artists who painted them painted him as a, as with very Germanic features and very um very much to look like them. Um you know, they say in wartime, the, the history is written by the victors. Well, re- religious art is is depicted by whoever claims it. So the paintings that you see of of Jesus, you know, the the Germanic white man, it, are not really that accurate. Um, and years ago, I painted a picture of, um, of Jeshua. And, and over the years... Um, as more and more memories came in, I I did more paintings just because it my it was getting clearer of what I was getting a better look, a better a better view. And um, I one time was speaking, and this was many many years ago. I was speaking at a holistic fair, and <clears throat> a group of black women in the back of the room raised their hand, and the question was, "What color was he?" And my response was, "Well, I I would I would like to be able to say he was no color." Or every color, because I don't think color falls into it. But I said but he was darker skinned, and you know he was he was an Arab, you know, from that part of the world. And so when I sh- showed my painting, they were like, "Oh, okay." Then they said, "You're speaking the truth." Well, I've showed that painting to other people who said, "Oh, there's no way that he looks like that." And um, what's going to make this video controversial today? is I'm going to show you the painting right now. And that is my buddy, Joshua Ben Joseph. He was funny. He um, was strong. <laughs> um, he, he laughed regularly. And whenever I paint him or whenever I do art of him, I always end up with these very sad looking eyes and I've never been able to, to capture the joy that was him. And I, re- I later asked a reader why, why I can only look at his sad as eyes. And she said, well, it's because you looked at him on the cross. You saw him on the cross. And so you, know, you watched him in that state. So you, that's imprinted, which I, you know, I don't know if that's true or not, but um, this is the man. This is the man that I remember. This is the man that I have memories of. This is the man that I loved, and this is the man who I watched love others. Um, Jeshua ben Joseph. Um, modern representations of of Jesus are are meant to make people relate to him. You know, that's why when you look at um, the the funny movie by George Carlin that George Carlin was in, where they had Buddy Christ, you know. Right, that was it. Was the marketing of Jesus? It was the marketing of Christianity, and as were the paintings in the Renaissance. They were the marketing of Christianity, and it's fascinating to me how how when you look at history in general, history is like a telephone game because, especially in religious history, because it was an oral history. People would hand down from generation to generation to generation. And you know stories would change. You know, you know the guy who goes out and catches a catches a a fish, and that fish ends up taken down the boat by the end of the story, right? Because it's because the stories change over time. Now imagine those same stories going from oral tradition to written tradition to translated to translated to translated to interpreted to translated to edited to translated to translated to translated to translate it to now. That's the Bible. So not only did you have the the telephone game for 2,000 years, you had everybody putting their interpretation on it. In in 325, the Nicene Council, 
uh, Constantine removed 60 of the books that were originally supposed to go in there and took it down to the ones that he liked. Um, and several other things happened. At the Nicene Council, they had a vote. Was he a, a man or was he the son of God? And he, in 325, he became the son of God. So that whole deifying thing that happened happened in the 300s, 300 years after the crucifixion. You know, a lot of the stuff that, that Jeshua talked about was all about self-empowerment and being realizing that you are divine and you are you know, the son of God. You are the children of God. You are the one who has the ability to create your experience. And a lot of that has been lost in the telephone game of history. And so this absolutely is going to be one of the most controversial videos that I'll make for several reasons. People will argue the image. It happened the last time I, I, I put it out. It happened. And it's happening now. It will happen now. Um, the other thing that, that's, that, that's interesting is that the history that I just spoke about, many will argue it because they're so profoundly attached to the beliefs, that the doctrines that have been taught. And I'm not about the doctrines. I'm about the history and the lessons and the things that came out. And um, I'm about showing you who he really was. And really, uh, on a very straightforward level, I want you to see him as a man. I want you to see him as a man because that's what he wanted you to see him as. He wanted to see you to see him as a man who had a little more information to share. And, you know, he had figured some great things out. And from an early age, from an early age, I mean, I, I think he came in wide open. I think all children come in wide open. My own son, when he was six years old, told me that um, God is in everything and everyone. And he controls the God part inside of us. Uh, I'm sorry, we we control the God part inside of us, not he. God is in, and we rephrase, let me say it again so it's perfectly clear. God is in everything and everyone, and we control the God part inside of us. That was from the words of a six-year-old, a mind of a six-year-old. So, I think children are very wide open and they're very unconditionally loving when they come in and it's the experiences of the, uh, and their, their dance with fear while they're here that changes them to forget their connection. And what Jeshua did was he never forgot his connection. And then, of course, um, when I get into the history of Jeshua on a different video, um, and as I talked about in Kim's interview about the, you know, the prophet Isa in India, um, he just never lost his connection. And then he got came to understand it more and more. The more he, he learned, the more he studied, the more he discussed. And that's the key, discussion. We learn more when we talk to each other than we ever will from a written text. We'll learn more because it's experiential. We need the experiences and the things that we're doing. We need to put practice, thought, word, and deed. Deed is the third. Thought and word without deed are daydreams. You have to actually put things into action. So... That's my buddy, and um, understand that that I'm not ta I'm not talking about Germanic history. I'm talking about real memories from a past life, um, and I hope you'll accept him and love him the way I do. So uh, there you go. Have a great day. See ya. Bye.